know, some people say I'm crazy. I've been called crazy old man. I've been called the crazy dirty old man. I've been called the wise crazy old man. I've been called the crazy old white man. People keep saying I'm crazy. Well, to you people, thank you, because you're right. And this is the Crazy Old Man Network. Children of the Dust. Link, John Bilger. Published 28th of May 2007. As the Israeli army attempts to imprison an entire nation, it is the youngest who suffer most. Half of all Palestinians killed in the past six years are children. Israel is destroying any notion of a state of Palestine and is being allowed to imprison an entire nation. That is clear from the latest attacks on Gaza, whose suffering has become a metaphor for the tragedy imposed on the peoples of the Middle East and beyond. These attacks, reported on Channel 4 News, were targeting key militants of Hamas and the Hamas infrastructure. The BBC described a clash between the same militants and Israeli F-16 aircraft. Consider one such clash. The militant's car was blown to pieces by a missile from a fighter bomber. Who were these militants? In my experience, all the people of Gaza are militant in their resistance to their jailer and tormentor. As for the Hamas infrastructure, this was the headquarters of the party that won last year's democratic elections in Palestine. To report that would give the wrong impression. It would suggest that the people in the car and all the others over the years, the babies and the elderly who have also clashed with fighter bombers, were victims of a monstrous injustice. It would suggest the truth. Some say, said the Channel 4 reporter, that Hamas has courted this attack. Perhaps he was referring to the rockets fired at Israel from within the prison of Gaza which killed no one. Under international law an occupied people has the right to use arms against the occupier's forces. This right is never reported. The Channel 4 reporter referred to an endless war, suggesting equivalents. There is no war. There is resistance among the poorest, most vulnerable people on earth to an enduring, illegal occupation imposed by the world's fourth largest military power, whose weapons of mass destruction range from cluster bombs to thermonuclear devices, bankrolled by the superpower. In the past six years alone, wrote the historian Ellen Papp, Israeli forces have killed more than 4,000 Palestinians, half of them children. Consider how this power works. According to documents obtained by United Press International, the Israelis once secretly funded Hamas as a direct attempt to divide and dilute support for a strong, secular PLO Palestine liberation organization by using a competing religious alternative, in the words of a former CIA official. Today, Israel and the U.S. have reversed this ploy and openly back Hamas's rival, Fatah, with bribes of millions of dollars. Israel recently secretly allowed 500 Fatah fighters to cross into Gaza from Egypt, where they had been trained by another American client, the Cairo dictatorship. The Israelis aim is to undermine the elected Pales Tinian government and ignite a civil war. They have not quite succeeded. In response, the Palestinians forged a government of national unity, of both Hamas and Fatah. The latest attacks are aimed at destroying this. With Gaza secured in chaos and the West Bank walled in, the Israeli plan, wrote the Palestinian academic Karma Nabolsi, is, a Hobbitian vision of an anarchic society, truncated, violent, powerless, destroyed, cowed, ruled by disparate militias, gangs, religious ideologues and extremists, broken up into ethnic and religious tribalism and co-opted collaborationists. Look to the Iraq of today. On 19th of May, the Guardian received this letter from Omar Jabri al sarafah a Ramallah resident, land, water and air are under constant sight of a sophisticated military surveillance system that makes Gaza like the Truman Show, he wrote. In this film every Gazan actor has a predefined role and the Israeli army behaves as a director. The Gaza Strip needs to be shown as what it is an Israeli laboratory backed by the international community where human beings are used as rabbits to test the most dramatic and perverse practices of economic suffocation and starvation. The remarkable Israeli journalist Gideon Levy has described the starvation sweeping Gaza's more than a million and a quarter inhabitants and the thousands of wounded, disabled and shell-shocked people unable to receive any treatment. The shadows of human beings roam the ruins. They only know the Israeli army will return and they know what this will mean for them, more imprisonment in their homes for weeks, more death and destruction in monstrous proportions. 
Whenever I have been in Gaza, I have been consumed by this melancholia, as if I were a trespasser in a secret place of mourning. Skeins of smoke from wood fires hang over the same Mediterranean sea that free peoples know, but not here. Along beaches that tourists would regard as picturesque trudge the incarcerated of Gaza, lines of sepia figures become silhouettes, marching at the water's edge, through lapping sewage. The water and power are cut off, yet again, when the generators are bombed, yet again. Iconic murals on walls pockmark by bullets commemorate the dead, such as the family of 18 men, women and children who, clashed, with a 500-pound American-Israeli bomb, dropped on their block of flats as they slept. Presumably, they were militants. More than 40% of the population of Gaza are children under the age of 15. Reporting on a four-year field study in occupied Palestine for the British Medical Journal, Dr. Derek Summerfield wrote that, two-thirds of the 621 children killed at checkpoints, in the street, on the way to school, in their homes, died from small arms fire, directed in over half of cases to the head, neck and chest, the sniper's wound. A friend of mine with the United Nations calls them, children of the dust. Their wonderful childishness, their oudiness and giggles and charm, belie their nightmare. I met Dr. Khalid Dolan, a psychiatrist who heads one of several children's community health projects in Gaza. He told me about his latest survey. The statistic I personally find unbearable, he said, is that 99.4% of the children we study suffer trauma. Once you look at the rates of exposure to trauma, you see why, 99.2% of the study group's homes were bombarded, 97.5% were exposed to tear gas, 96.6% witnessed shootings, 95.8% witnessed bombardment and funerals, almost a quarter saw family members injured or killed. He said children as young as three faced the dichotomy caused by having to cope with these conditions. They dreamt about becoming doctors and nurses, then this was overtaken by an apocalyptic vision of themselves as the next generation of suicide bombers. They experienced this invariably after an attack by the Israelis. For some boys, their heroes were no longer football players, but a confusion of Palestinian, martyrs, and even the enemy, because Israeli soldiers are the strongest and have Apache gunships. Shortly before he died, Edward said bitterly reproached foreign journalists for what he called their destructive role in, stripping the context of Palestinian violence, the response of a desperate and horribly oppressed people, and the terrible suffering from which it arises. Just as the invasion of Iraq was a war by media, so the same can be said of the grotesquely one-sided conflict in Palestine. As the pioneering work of the Glasgow University Media Group shows, television viewers are rarely told that the Palestinians are victims of an illegal military occupation, the term, occupied territories, is seldom explained. Only 9% of young people interviewed in the UK know that the Israelis are the occupying force and the illegal settlers are Jewish, many believe them to be Palestinian. The selective use of language by broadcasters is crucial in maintaining this confusion and ignorance. Words such as, terrorism, murder, and, savage, cold-blooded killing, describe the deaths of Israelis, almost never Palestinians. There are honorable exceptions. The kidnapped to BBC reporter Alan Johnston is one of them. Yet, amidst the avalanche of coverage of his abduction, no mention is made of the thousands of Palestinians abducted by Israel, many of whom will not see their families for years. There are no appeals for them. In Jerusalem, the Foreign Press Association documents the shooting and intimidation of its members by Israeli soldiers. In one eight-month period, as many journalists, including the CNN bureau chief in Jerusalem, were wounded by the Israelis, some of them seriously. In each case, the FPA complained. In each case, there was no satisfactory reply. A censorship by omission runs deep in Western journalism on Israel, especially in the U.S. Her mass is dismissed as a terrorist group sworn to Israel's destruction, and one that refuses to recognize Israel and wants to fight not talk. This theme suppresses the truth. Well, I am back. And this is a serious subject. Pisses me off, so my language may get bad. May come out as street language. Uh, there were a couple of things on Israel uh, in my last 
part of the show, the news show. And the uh, criminal court came out and said Israel is guilty of war crimes. Well, we all knew that, but they don't give a damn. And neither does the United States, because neither one of them goes by the criminal courts. In fact, I think they're the only two countries that don't. Uh, I may be wrong on that, but whenever the Palestinian issue comes up in the, in the UN General Assembly, normally only two votes against, and that is Israel and the United States. Anytime um, anything anti-Israel comes up in the UN and Security Council, the U.S. says no. They veto it. One of the reasons is that they get paid by Israel through uh, Israel's uh, uh, lobbying group. Another thing is that they're stupid. Supporting Israel is the dumbest thing America has ever done, or the U.S. has ever done. I won't say America, because America is the people. And I really don't think that most of the people do. Even though the, you don't find any anti-Israel stuff in the mainstream news media. Probably more than half of our country listens to the mainstream news media, which is not too swift, really, because they're full of lies and cover-ups. If you want the news, go to Independent News, Democracy Now!, RT English has great news. <coughs> Excuse me. And I have that on my shows. So come to my shows. Every day, I have new shows. They run anywhere from four to ten hours. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh... But the thing that gets me is Israel's getting even worse. I mean, they even are threatening to drop the bomb on Iran. What would the United States do? Probably say, yippee, you did it, you did it. That's probably what they would do. They say it could start a World War Three. It could, but the best thing to do is to go after Israel. Here's what I think should happen. I think that the United States should finally get fed up with Israel. Stop giving them weapons and money. But then Saudi Arabia would step in and do that. I think the United States should have a little deal in the UN where they tell Israel to get out of Palestine, to get rid of that damn wall that they're building, and Palestine will go back to the 1967 borders. They should also give Syria back its land. Or maybe even make that part of Palestine. I think it's connected. I'm not sure. Anyway, if Israel doesn't do that, they don't get rid of the settlements in Palestine, move the wall back to... They can still have the wall, but it has to be on the 1967 borders. I mean, if they want to be live within a wall, fine, let them do it. 
Now, Israel says that they are in danger of having the Arab countries and the Palestinians go after them. Bullshit. Israel is the fourth most powerful country on earth. Seems to me they don't have to worry. I look at the Middle East and I see how screwed up it is because of the U.S. Look at Iraq. Iraq was much better off before the U.S. got involved in it. And now in Syria, seems like Al-Qaeda is going to take over Syria. And Al-Qaeda is supported by Saudi Arabia. Not Iran. You know, when we went into Afghanistan, Iran offered to help. Of course, the United States wouldn't admit it. You see, first of all, Iran really didn't want the nuclear bombs. They said they didn't. And if they did, they could have had it a long time ago. And the United States getting involved in Iran is going to cause problems. The United States, I'm sure, behind the scenes is involved in Syria. Which means that Al-Qaeda will win in Syria. It's ridiculous. Israel, I feel, is as bad, if not worse, than Hitler was. If you listen to what they're doing, they are doing what Hitler did. They haven't killed six million Palestinians, but they killed a whole bunch of them. They've taken their land and their water. They turn off their electricity. Palestinians get taxed. Palestinians, Israel takes the Palestinian money and doesn't give it to them like it should. Israel has that, that thing where their ships keep other ships from going to uh, Palestine. To me, that's illegal. Israel being in Palestine is illegal. It's an act of war. Like she said, they complain about Hamas and its missiles. What's Israel doing? Hamas is not the terrorist. Israel's a terrorist. And the United States, too. Two worst terrorists in the world, Israel and the United States. And I'm sick of it. And I think you should be, too. And you should bitch and moan, complain, send letters to your congressmen, even though they don't give a shit about what you say. Send letters to the president, even though he doesn't give a shit what you say. We got to get in the streets and fight. We got to let the uh, world know that we got a backbone and we won't put up with the bullshit. It's ridiculous. And I sit here and talk about it. There isn't a hell of a lot I could do myself. But talk about it. And have this little radio show. And the radio show is getting more popular. More people are starting to listen. Which sort of scares me in a way. Because I look out my bedroom window. I can be in bed and I can see Homeland Security, FBI, and all the federal cops and spies and everything. They could kill me. Of putting a sniper up on the roof of the federal building over there. 
I don't think I'm on the kill list yet, but I wouldn't be surprised. I'm willing to bet if I try and get on an airplane that they're going to say, no, you can't go. In fact, we're going to hold you. And if I have my laptop with me, oh, they're going to get that. We got a problem in this country. The problem is our, our government. problem is that they support people they shouldn't be supporting. They support Bahrain. Now, they bitch and moan about attacking the demonstrators in other countries, and yet in Bahrain, they were even worse, and yet the United States didn't say anything. Well, we got a naval base there. Big fucking deal. We got a naval base in, in Cuba. And we don't let the Cubans kick us out or anything. And we aren't too friendly with the Cubans. Shouldn't be friendly with Bahrain. Shouldn't be friendly with Saudi Arabia. Oh, but they got all that oil. So do other places Hell, we can get our oil from Iran. We, and you know we're stealing it from Iraq. Got to do something. What I'm going to do, I'm going to play Bombs Falling, Nowhere to Go, by David Archer. Oh, by the way, the first one was Children in the Dust by John Pilger. I don't know who the woman was that was singing. But this was originally, I think, for the Palestinian thing. But it goes for all the Middle East with the drones and what the drones are doing. And their kids in the Middle East feel the same way. Just a short break. We can 
take the risk. My children are shivering. It is getting so cold. Some neighbors went back inside, but they are staying on the first floor. We don't know what will come next. This is the closest it has come to our house. The neighborhood next to ours was bombed. What do we do? We don't know. We have nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. say a few more things maybe a lot of things I don't know it depends on how pissed I get if you listen to my shows about Zionism and what's happening in Israel I've got I think close to 24 hours worth of stuff on it. And it seems to me that you might figure out how bad things are there. Because it's really bad. Palestine before Israel existed. It was per, it was a, a colony of Britain. Palestine, the Jews and the Arabs got along great. I get that from people who used to live there. And then the Zionists got involved. Oh, the Zionists were in Germany and they worked with the Nazis and then Hitler decided that he had to have a scapegoat so he blamed the Jews for everything that's where the Holocaust came from Zionists knew it was going to happen they were told said get we'll give you time to get your people out so a few of them got out, and then when things started really going bad, a bunch more got out. Actually, the only place that really accepted them was Palestine. The Palestinians. And, like I say, they got along well. But then the Zionists got in, got came up, and they started to rebel against the British. They won a revolution. So what they did to thank the Palestinians for all they did for them was to steal their land. Now, I could see him having Israel there, but they got 80% of the land when they only had 20% of the people. They moved Palestinians off their land. Palestinians went to Jordan. They went to Lebanon. And then the British invaded Lebanon and killed a bunch of Palestinians there. I do believe it was over a thousand. And 
no reason to do it except they didn't like the Palestinians. They really don't like the Arabs. They don't like the Christians either. The Christians have hell over there too. They made Israel a Jewish state. Which means that anybody that's not Jewish, or if you're Jewish and black, they don't like you either, even though the original Jews were black. And they said that we're cleaning up. They want Israel to be only Jewish. Now, you go in the Middle East, Jews have less problems than the rest of the Middle East than they with the uh, Arabs than the than they, the Arabs do in Palestine. Same with the Christians in a lot of places. Now, in Syria, the problem is the ones that are going after the Christians are Al-Qaeda. It's not the government that's going after the Christians. In fact, the government saved the Christians when they went after a Christian city, when Al-Qaeda did. But you aren't going to hear that from the mainstream media. They made the Gaza Strip a prison. Gee, it sounds like Detroit. And all the black cities of Michigan now are run by the Tea Party, owned by the Tea Party. And the people are treated like not quite as bad, but apartheid is alive and well in Michigan. And it's getting worse. But I have a feeling next election that they're going to kick that idiot out. The Tea Party runs Michigan. Anyway. I feel that the United States is losing support from the rest of the world. A big part of it is Israel. A big part of it is that they stick their nose in where it's not wanted. A big part of it is that they're full of lies and they say one thing and do uh, another it's like they tell all these countries do as we say not as we do bullshit when parents say that the kids are going to do what the parents do they aren't going to do what they say and that's the way the United States is Now, don't sit there and think I'm a traitor because to me it's patriotic to try and get our freedom back. Those who support the government and what they're doing are the traitors. Our president is a traitor. The, Democrat, the Republicans in Congress are traitors. Probably half the Democrats are traitors. Something's got to be done. What it is, we got to fight. First at the ballot box. The elections come up in 2014. Do not vote for Republicans. Don't vote for a lot of the Democrats either. 
we got to get rid of the corporate power over our country. We got to get rid of TPP. We got to get rid of NAFTA. Have you ever noticed that our president is no longer the most powerful man on earth? Seems like Putin has taken over as a leader of the world. And if you want the truth, Putin has his drawbacks. But He's doing a lot better than our president is when it comes to the world. Hell, if I could, I'd go back, go down to Cuba. It's getting to the point where Cuba, you get better medical care there. A lot of good things about Cuba now. Of course, if you're Cuban and in the United States, you wouldn't agree with me. But maybe you don't know what's really happening there. I had a website called The Injustice System. What I did was I told about all the innocent people in prison, the people that were framed by the police, the prosecutors, even their lawyers were, you know, if they had good lawyers, they probably wouldn't have gone to prison. And you got a lot of people on death row who are innocent, and a lot of people will get executed who are innocent. And to me, those who do the executions are murderers. And it seems to me that the jurors that go for the death penalty are murderers. I don't think God likes murderers. They're the state does not have the right to kill people. The government does not have a right to kill people. War is evil. War is against God. And through negotiation, we could stay away from war. We've shown that in Iran, even though Congress is going to screw it up. But you see, the problem is that our country makes money on war. People in our government make money on war. To me, our Congress is the most corrupt as ever in history. They are being bribed by the big corporations and by the rich folks. It's as simple as that. All these campaign contributions are bribery. And they should be considered bribery. And the politicians that take those bribes should go to prison. And those that give those bribes should go to prison. Years ago, corporations were not allowed to contribute to political campaigns. It was a felony. Those who ordered it, those, those contributions could go to prison for it. Seems to me that that's the way it should be because it's bribery. They also had a, a limit to what could be contributed to a campaign. I believe it was, it was either $1,000 or 5000 
that's what they should have. And they had matching funding. I think, now like in Michigan, they have a thing where you can check a box and they'll give $2 contribution for each person to the political campaigns. That's what they should do. And like I said, it should be matching. But then, I think that their ad should be cheaper. <coughs> Remember when they had equal time thing? I just got off the subject of Israel. In Palestine, in Iran, in the Middle East. Right now, Israel is the most dangerous country on earth. If we do have a third world war, it's going to be Israel. It's going to start it. And I hope and pray that the world goes against Israel. Because if they don't, our world is going to be gone before global warming gets it. That means I may get myself killed. Well, of course, Fukushima is, is killing a whole bunch of people, too, over the world. Anyway, I'm going to go to the truth. Crimes Against Palestine. And then I'm going to close it after that. Whoops. i got to put it over here. And here we go. people deserve human rights just as all people do but the state of israel has no right to oppress rob and slaughter palestinians and to deny palestinians human rights i mean everything israel does they say they do it for security anna tell them what you think about that there's nothing defensive about denying palestinians water yeah not long ago over a thousand Palestinians died. About 16 Israelis died. Is that a conflict or a genocide? It's not anti Semitic, opposing government policies known to be pathetic. Come on, man. The government doesn't represent the people. Many Israeli activists yell the government is evil. Crusades with modern weapons, they keep making sequels. It's apartheid, you find walls of separation. They used to keep Arabs out of the Jewish nation. But people on both sides oppose the situation. You never know it from the mass media lies. They spread it and censor it. Censor it. Seek media that's independent because the government uses the news to spread their views. It's their spin and they profit off battles that they win. What would you do if you were born in Palestine and had no way to leave and saw bombs in the sky, would you fight back or sit and watch your family members die? die. Why is Israel unaccountable for crimes? Why? These censored and false are going on a daily show. They lie and hide those crimes we need to know. Our taxes fund $7 million given daily for building weapons used by the Israeli military. It's not about the Bible or Quran when they bomb. It's about the sickness, the greed for the riches. The government doesn't represent the people and the interests, so the people got to react with actions to flip Come this. the witness. When to oppression with quickness. They do it for yeah. democracy? That's just a mockery. Like writing the Constitution, owning slaves on their property. What? They aim to brainwash. 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 Brainw
They call them militants. Do some due diligence. History is written by who had the biggest weapons. History's his story. And how his lies spread it. The media's his tool to keep us fools that's distracted. For truth, we buy bombs. It's a comp paying taxes. Security or isn't it? Starving Palestinians. Israelis are admitting it. Their government committing it. He sends it and a boss are going on a daily show. They lie and hide those crimes we need to know. Our taxes fund $7 million given daily for building weapons used by the Israeli military. They say it's separation of church and state, but wait, wait. They created a Jewish state in 1948, but they placed it in a land that was ran by Palestine. Britain didn't care about the Arabs there to die. They conquered it. People lived there, man, it was monstrous. Think what this country did when Britain was on top of it. We needed one state solution, a people's revolution. Refuting the division of living in separation. For ethnic relations, that only spells devastation. Man, have a revelation. We all humans, that's the same. And no group is prominent. No group should be dominant. Slave trade atrocities were just as bad or worse as the curse of the Nazis. You can't have democracy created by atrocity. It's hypocrisy. hypocrisy. Living in a theocracy. I'm tired of the lies Cause they value Jewish lives over Arabs when they die And they sense it and it's also going on a daily show They lie and hide those crimes we need to know Our taxes fund $7 million given daily For building weapons used by the Israeli military They sense it and it's also going on a daily show They lie and hide those crimes we need to know Our taxes fund $7 million given daily For building weapons used by the Israeli military the apartheid they got going on, it's like the apartheid that happened in South Africa. The apartheid that happened here in the U.S. All groups should be equal and equally accountable. To mend the situation and the occupation. There's nothing defensive about preventing people from having materials to, to build their homes. There's, I mean, it, so much of the institutions that I, you know, that I understood to be defensive cannot be justified by security anymore. Building a wall between Palestinians and Palestinians. Check out Anna in the Middle East.com. time for me to go i want to thank you all for listening i hope you listen to all my shows i know you can't but try i want everybody to have a good day good week good month and a good year most of all i want you to have a beautiful life thank you for being you tgya thank god you're alive